All right, good morning, everybody. My name's Lieutenant Mason O'Neill. I am uh, assigned to the Safety Support Division here at the Austin Fire Department. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, you yes. Know, with this COVID mask, it makes things a little bit more difficult. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, what I want to talk to, to you today about is PPE and how it relates to your overall health and safety. Uh, we're also going to talk about the experienced firefighters, you guys, as a role model for safe behavior. Uh, who thinks of themselves as a role model here? Okay. And, and who are you a role model to? To the cadets and probationary firefighters. Okay. So, so looking safety. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I think you guys are on the right track with that mentality, and that's something that I really want to uh, stress to you and convey to you that. The things that you do uh, do affect the behavior of others. The learning object objectives are the things that you're going to be able to either do, know, list, perform at the completion of this class. Uh, the first one is you will be able to list the specific intervals and the events that require your gear to get advanced cleaned. Uh, we'll talk about what advanced clean means here in a little bit. Second learning objective is to be able to identify the spe specific types of damage that re will require your gear to get repaired. Number three, list at least two benefits of properly cleaned and maintained bunker gear. And four, you'll be able to Disassemble and reassemble the layers of your bunker gear correctly, including correct assembly of the DRD. Let's get into a little bit of background. What's the number one killer among firefighters? Heart attack. Heart attack has traditionally been the number one killer of people in the fire service. Uh, according to the IAFF, Cancer is now the number one killer. So that's a very sobering fact. Uh, in fact, firefighters are 9% more likely and 14% to 9% more likely to get diagnosed and 14% more likely to die from a cancer related illness than the rest of the general population. With that understanding, any reduction in carcinogen exposure over the course of your career can have long-term beneficial health effects and that's both while you're working and when you're retired. In fact, Texas has a presumptive cancer law. Uh, what that means is that if you're diagnosed with one of 11 specific types of cancer, it's assumed that you contracted that on the job. Um, some of those are the ones we've heard about. We know our brothers and sisters have, have battled skin cancer, prostate cancer, um, blood cancer. You know, these are things that are a reality. When an insurance entity admits responsibility, you know that this is a big deal. So let me ask you, when's the last time you guys got your gear cleaned? At the last fire I was at. At the last fire you're at, okay. Last inspection. Last inspection, okay. For a lot of people, it, it it is only when that gear gets inspected or when safety support comes and does a PPE exchange, like in, in your case on scene, mm -hmm. will bring you clean gear. Um, when are you required to get your gear cleaned? Twice a year. Twice a year, okay. So that is correct, partially, uh, but you are also required to get your gear cleaned, advance cleaned, uh, anytime it's soiled or contaminated. And that's gonna be according to NFPA 1851, which is the standard on selection, care, and maintenance of your protective ensemble. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. 1851 says that anytime uh, your gear is contaminated, if it's done on scene, as soon as you exit, 
the structure, if let's say it's a structure fire, you're going to get gross decon. Now that doesn't mean you come out for a bottle swap and go back and do work. You do gross decon. But when you're done working and you're not going back in, you're going to uh, get your gear gross, gross decon. Anybody tell me what gross decon means? That's a quick wash down with the hose, just kind of knock the stuff down. There you go. You're going to knock off the stuff that's loose, the big chunks. Uh, you're going to do it before you come out of your gear, uh, while you're still on air to protect yourself. But you're going to get as much of the material off as you can. Uh, if you do a good gross decon, are you done? I mean, does that gear still need to be swapped out for clean gear? Yes. Exactly, it does. So gross decon is not the end all be all. Uh, it's one step according to 1851. The gear will still need to be advanced cleaned. Uh, so anytime your gear is soiled or contaminated, it requires that advanced cleaning. Uh, advanced cleaning. What do we think that means? Anybody? Like real in depth, maybe with a real close inspection and uh, just a deconning, but with different chemicals and soaps. Okay, you're, you're on the right tr track. Uh, advanced cleaning technically means that it's done in a commercial extractor, mm. which is designed to clean bunker gear. Okay. Um, let's talk about the difference between soiling and contamination. Soiling. Somebody want to take a guess at soiling? And I, you know, let's keep it, let's keep it adult here. <laughs> uh, Whether well, mostly like a, 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 a like a, uh, a dirt and um, uh, stuff like that, which which would be just easy wash off. Yeah. So soiling is exactly what you're saying. It's going to be dirt, dust, sweat, mm -hmm. uh, those types of things that aren't necessarily carcinogenic or toxic but they're still detrimental to your bunker gear. Uh, heavily soiled gear has a shorter lifespan, doesn't perform as well. Uh, it, it can, the, the, those things can actually affect the fibers uh, of the shell. Uh, they can make it uh, less thermally protective, uh, more prone to cuts and tears. Uh, versus contamination. Now contamination is going to be those things, those carcinogens, those toxic substances, uh, infectious substances, bodily fluids, uh, things like that. So 1851 says anytime it's soiled or contaminated. What if you had a slow house? I mean a really slow house and you're not getting it contaminated. You're still required to get it cleaned? Yes. 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 Okay. If the gear's in service twice a year, it, it gets that advanced cleaning. And that's uh, once in every six month period. So as we mentioned before, uh, the problem with soiling, it can degrade the lifespan, reduce properties of protection or hygiene issues. Uh, we've all heard at some point in our careers uh, of staph infection things like that, that comes from not getting your gear cleaned. The dangers of the contaminated gear are a continued re-exposure every time you put that gear on until it gets cleaned. That gear continues to off-gas. Uh, those particles of the products of combustion are gonna get distributed when that gear is worn, either in the room, in the apparatus, on your person, so it's imperative with, that we get that gear cleaned properly. When you think about it, you're not allowed to wear your bunker gear on a medical call on somebody's house. You can't wear it in the station anymore. Uh, I, who's been in long enough when we kept the bunker gear by our bedside? Okay, yeah, that's what we used to do. You roll out of bed, you put your feet in your, your pants and you head to the engine. Well, we now know that it's really dangerous. Um, all right, we'll let's get into this dirty gear mentality. Somebody tell me what, what, what they think a dirty gear mentality means. Uh, it just means it shows that you're, um, you don't want to get your gear clean because it, it <clears throat> makes it look like you're not working as hard or your, your station doesn't get any, any calls. Uh, it's just like a pride thing. So it's all about that perception, right? Yeah. That, that pride and perception. Uh, 
two great things, but can also really hold us back and make us do some things that aren't so good. I don't want to wash off, off all that hard work, all right? Definitely don't want to look like a rookie. Gear represents my reputation. Uh, this is the mentality, this is an old school mentality that we've all been guilty of. This really developed in the fire service before we understood this link uh, to cancer. The things we know now would hopefully prevent some of that, but it's here and it's pervasive. So that's what you guys as experienced firefighters need to work to overcome. Uh, when you think about that role model that we talked about earlier, these probies, these young firefighters look to you guys. They look to you guys, how, do you run, how does he run that medical call? You know, how does he act on scene? What does he do? And when you're using that dirty gear as a badge of honor, they see that, they want to emulate that, you know. The dirty gear affects you, but that behavior affects a lot more people when it starts getting mimicked. The other thing, think of your PPE as a tool. You don't have a, uh, a dull axe on your engine. You don't have fire hose that has holes and loose couplings. So why would you have gear that's offering less protection than it could? So our, this is, I really wanna uh, drive home this concept of you guys as role models. Everybody on board with that? Yes. Sure. yes. All right, so let's get into this. some, some Damage types, uh, this, this stuff's pretty obvious. Here we've got a, a hole in the reflective stripe that actually goes through the layer. That needs to be addressed. Uh, somebody wanna tell me what they think this, this one is over here? Will that be a DRD? Yeah, that's the DRD, exactly right. It's missing the Velcro. So, you know, the danger here is that DRD, the handle doesn't stay in place and it either slips inside the coat and it's not there when you need it. These are the things when you turn your gear in for that annual inspection, you want to denote on your inspection sheet. Uh, this is one that's pretty common. Uh, on the left we've got a knee pad with bad Velcro. Anybody tell me what they think that one is? It's like some fraying of like some like stitching. Yeah, so here we've got the, uh, a bunker pant near the fly, and so this is the, the fraying of those two inner liners. Mm. Uh, here's a good one. Somebody tell me what they think's going on in this photo. UV damage? UV damage, exactly right. Uh, UV is a killer for bunker gear. There's no way around it. Uh, the days of storing your bunker gear hanging on the engine sitting out in the apron all all afternoon in the texas sun that that has to end uh, uv damage causes fibers to become brittle prone to tearing uh, you can see it here i mean this is this is a common example of older gear that's been stored out in the sun I have a question. Yes. How much UV damage can it there be on a coat or pant uh, before we turn it in? If you suspect it at all, turn it in and let us look at it. Okay. Uh, there are some things we can do, some tests we can do. We'll, we'll stress the fabric to see if it's still, you know, uh, intact. Uh, but yeah, if you suspect it at all, let us know. Got it. Here's a big one. Uh, Anybody got a guess on this? What's going on here? It looks like, is it sweat or bleach? Bleach, exactly right. Bleach is, is a corrosive substance. It should never be used on turnouts in any concentration. Um, this is, it is an extreme case. This was direct bleach, but even bleach that's diluted cannot be used to clean turnouts or disinfect turnouts. Uh, the cleaning and disinfectant that we use has a very specific pH range. Um, so let's get into the DRD and the assembly of the DRD. A couple different types of DRD depending on the manufacturer. 
they do the same thing. Uh, they're both a continuous loop that will go over the shoulders. Uh, DRD stands for Bueller Drag Rescue Device. Bueller Drag Rescue Device. There you go. Um, the steps for assembling the DRD. It's easy to get wrong, but once you get the concept down, then you got it made. Uh, the big thing is once you separate the, the shell from the liner. You want to turn the arms of the coat inside out. Okay. Then you want to make sure nothing's twisted. So it's all laying flat. Next thing is you want to make equal loops. You don't want it pulled over one more on one side than the other, okay? So we got basically equal loops. Then you're going to take those and go over each arm. This is going to put the DRD in the correct position and between the, the two layers of the coat. You're going to take the inner liner, not inside out, right side out, the way that you would put it on, and you're going to match it up. Next, you'll take the wristlets, connect those with the straps or whatever device they use to connect. You do that on both sides. And you're almost there. Last thing you're going to do is from the outside, reach into the sleeve on both sides and go ahead and pull the sleeves up. If you have them connected correctly, they'll come out perfect. You won't have to make this readjustment that I'm doing. Now you're assembled correctly. You do want to check to make sure the DRD sometimes will get sucked down the sleeve. So reach in here, get it looped over the shoulders where you got free range of movement. And then go ahead and reconnect your layers of your bunker coat. This one has snaps, some have zips, depends on the manufacturer. Everybody think they got the concept of that down? Yes, yes, yes sir. Okay. So let's wrap this up. Uh, we'll go back to our learning objectives. You guys now know that anytime your gear gets sold or contaminated, or at least twice a year, you're going to get that advanced inspection. Uh, types of damage, physical damage, UV damage, those are the things that we look for and will get repaired. You also know that properly clean bunker gear not only increases the lifespan of the gear, makes it more protective, but the most important thing, it reduces your exposure to those carcinogens and tox toxic substances. And then finally, we'll practice this after we're done, but you guys should be able to properly assemble your bunker gear, including the DRD. Anybody got any questions over that or everybody feel comfortable? We're good. All good. Okay. Well, well thank you guys and I hope that uh, you'll take some of this, especially that role model concept, back out to your stations. Thank you. Running right 19 and a half. Fuck, I forgot. No. <laughs> I forgot to record it. I would just. Third time's a charge. <laughs>